Well, welcome to Cooled Art. Uh, I'm going to try and make a rhinoceros. I haven't made one for two or three years. Got partial instructions on how to make one. Um, quite similar to making the elephant. A lot of the designs in making the rhinoceros follow on from what I did with the elephant. So we'll put it, we'll put, we'll put the elephant over that way for a minute. Um, now, I did start this project and then someone online says, oh, I'd like to see a video of that. And of course, I've done a vital part of it. Um, I don't want to do it again. So I'm just going to explain this bit. Now, this bit obviously is the body, much longer than what I make the elephant's body. The elephant's body is just one of those. Well, there's not a lot of difference really, is there? But what I've actually done with this one, the former inside, is two of these yeah so i've just got some um, two thirds of that one slice this end off cut two thirds of that one slice this end off and then the two go together now i wanted um them to have a bit more of a a bend in the middle there so it looked like a, a bit of a, a waste, if you like, but that wasn't to be. I mean, fair enough, if I'd cut these, probably a bit closer to the end, both of them to the end. And then what I did is actually glued them together with some PVA and uh, wrapped a bit of tape around them to, so it went off. Um, and then we did... Um, a monkey's fist so that one inside my jig as a white ball or two double white balls if you like and then I did a monkey's fist um, now we had 18 goes around here so that was 18 going up that way 10 going up this way and 10 going through that way now I've done loads of monkey's fists online, but this is just a fairly big one, yeah? So that was the monkey's fist. So that's going to be the body, or that's the, the way I see it is going to be the body. Before we go any further, I'll show you what I'm working off of. About two years ago, I did some mild instructions, but I when, when the, um, hit, the uh, rhino was done, I actually put it on a piece of paper and drew around it. So that's about as good as it gets. But um, I'm gonna put a photograph of the rhino, which I did make at the beginning of this um, video. So that should help. So you know how we made the body, yeah? Let's just put that back around there. Now the two bits that I cut off are these balls. I stuck them two bits together again and made yet another ball. And the reason I did that is because I needed a piece of foam and yeah, I've taped around it. I glued, glued in the middle, taped around it, as you can see. It's almost the size of making the head, but not quite. I want to try and keep, um, near to what I made before. And I know that um, if I turn back on my instructions, that the head was two and a half inches length and one and a half inches across. Well, this is slightly bigger than that. But what I intend on doing now is shaping this, getting hold of my Stanley knife yeah and shaping this more or less well until i'm happy um, um and i'm going to have a couple of recesses in the head where i can actually put eyes now i will mention what i'm going to use for eyes my lovely wife decided that she didn't want these well they're earrings aren't they but at the bottom of each earring is one fairly nice gem. And I fancy using these gems 
as the black eye in the in the head like so something like that yeah and it'd be surrounded by cord so it looks a bit better so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play around with this get it to a shape that I'm happy with I'll come back to you oh well let's just mention when I did this these 18 I think it was 18 2 4 6 8 10 12 14 16 18 yeah 18 10 and 10 that was 30 feet of cord I need 30 feet of cord to do that and that was close so 31 32 feet of cord for the body on two half balls put together yeah right so I'm gonna play around with this one get it to the shape um, and then I'm gonna be putting it into my jig to do a monkey's fist on it um, but I'll come back to you before I do that because I want to shape it and then I'll tell you the dimensions I mean yeah the if you're going to make this your form is not going to be exactly the same as mine so it's a matter of making yourself happy with the former that you've got I'll come back to you shortly hi there um, well this is what I've come up with as a head for this rhino um, it's about the right proportion yeah you can get away with anything really there's another egg as long as you could actually get away with using or just trimming down another egg shape smaller egg shape to make a head i've chose to go the long-winded way and cut off all these bits and pieces but uh come up with something that i think might look something like a a head on a rhino the the proving point will be when i actually put it into my jig and work out what orientation it needs to be for the cords to be in the the, the correct flow if you like now i probably want it to be a bit like this egg i want the top bit sort of coming over like that the jowls will be these bits here and then the nose will be this bit here yeah um you've got to get your orientation right um as i can't actually explain how i'm going to yeah, how that's going to be i mean i'm going to be starting off with this in here going up probably 10 times around it but it depends on which way comes first, if you like, on this. So that's got to be like so. These ones are these ones. Those ones are those ones, yeah? I've got to work out which way they've got to go into here. When I've done that, excuse me, <coughs> when I've done that, I'll come back to you and tell you if it worked or not and how much cord I used on this little head here okay come back soon welcome back bringing up to date with what I've been doing as you can see this uh, body has sprouted uh, three legs we will make the fourth leg together um, I've got a hole stuck right in that corner to receive a piece of cord with wire in it which we'll, we'll put together at um, in a minute and we'll have a go at doing that um, just to bring you up to speed with the head now the head wasn't sure how it was going to come out you never do but it it's starting to look like a head to me I'm just playing around with this extra piece of um, cord at the moment to try and get a lip so it's going to hopefully have a lip there, nostril, nostril, eyes are right down low, eye, eye, and then two tufty ears coming up on the top, yeah. 
we'll go through that a bit later i'm going to just leave that for the moment um still sort of thinking of ideas um i'll set this up for doing the last leg uh, just one thing um the armor what i call the armor like around this um uh elephant now there's three six seven bites in that angel's wing there um i've decided to go for six bites on the rhinos armor if you like and you think well why has he got blue there well the customers requested that the armor be blue and this is blue diamond and uh it is China. I got it from China, but it's probably one of the best feeling cords I've ever purchased. It did say American spec, so whether the Chinese have bought it from the Americans, I don't know. But I was thinking, I've put this to the, um, whoops, come back. I've put this to the, uh, per, th this issue to the purchaser. Now I could put it like I have done with the elephant, like so. But I've pointed out to him that on a rhino, there folds a skin. And I'm thinking that we could actually do something like that as armor on the, I like the way that that looks shaped. It's a bit like what rhino photographs I've been looking at and then this is the folds of skin around here so i'm hoping he's going to come back come back and say yeah that's good but if he likes it like this fair enough he can have it like that but uh if he does like it like this i'll have to make another one to see what it looks like like so um i might be putting a bit more blue here and there um the customer just likes this blue diamond and yeah it goes quite well see what happens right so onwards and upwards let's put the elephant over there this here now to make a leg we need three and a half inches of wire now that's three and a half inches once the um i've bent it over like that each end yeah so it's about three and a half inches piece of cord I'm just looking around for my lighter at the moment. There it is. So we're going to feed this piece of wire by holding on to the, the inners, just like that. This is melted. I've melted this end over. This is obviously about four inches in length because I want that to be swall swallowed up inside the uh, cord so that should oops silly me that should by holding on to these white ones pushing down on here that should with a bit of luck nope let's have another go at that get out of all of those cords That's better. Now that's gone in there. So that's going to be our core. What we do there is just snip off the end there. Heat that up into a point. What I do for sometimes is actually put a touch of super glue on the ends and let them dry so they go hard and then that goes straight in. But um, I'm hopeful that by putting that fid, putting a fid into there, giving it a bit of a waggle or woggle that we can 
get that nicely in like so. So we've got the core coming up. It's obviously longer than this, but we'll be cutting a bit of that off. Now I'm going to be doing um, a five chord crown around this because it comes out a little bit thicker. The um, elephant's crowns are only four with a core in the middle. So you could say five, but this is five and a core. So it's six if you like. So that's there. Now we need, I, I seem to have lost a piece of cord on the way up here. Hang on. I'll have to cut another piece. Yeah, I, I tend to um, do my work downstairs where the light is a lot better in the conservatory. And I take everything about in this box, take the box downstairs, do a bit of work, and come back upstairs to the attic where my workshop is. Now I know that we need um, two pieces of cord 18 inches long. So we'll cut those. As I say, I did cut them. I've got one of them still. Um, we'll put a point on for a fid there. And just in case we need to use the other end for a fid, we'll put a point on that end as well. So these are both 18 inches long. Just about anyway. And then we've got a nine inch piece, which is the fifth piece of the crown. And it's got a pointy on there to take the fit. Um, but I've heated up and put a, a fairly big blob on the end so that we can pull that up underneath some cords and not have it slip straight through. But so I put that one in last. Now, when I made a video of the elephant, I made this look really hard and I'm probably going to do the same thing again, but let's have a go. If it gets in, it gets a bit too messy, then I'll stop the film, put all the cords in and come back to you. Right. So I can see that on this one, I've gone into there and gone and uh, takes a little bit of maneuvering with the old fid. There's a lot of a lot of cords to get around. But you persevere, you can actually get it where you want it. I can see me see me turning off the tape in a minute. Right. There's one. Bring that down. So we've got half and half. So that becomes two chords then that we're going to do our crown with. Load up the other one. Now we want to go the opposite way. We've gone diagonally from there to the outside yeah we want to go here now um let's just go that side and see if we can come up somewhere reasonable bring in a little bit of uh, white ball polystyrene through with me at the moment but I'm not too worried about that so that's four get rid of that bit of uh, foam maybe yeah now the fifth one we'll load him up I took from the back and just up through 
to those three, like so. Yeah. And as he comes through, hopefully that blobule of melted cord will, st will keep um, where I put it. I'm just going to force it in underneath a little bit there, like so. So effectively, we've got five cords coming down around the core. Now, when you're crowning, you can go either left, one over the top, or you can go right. I like to have those two the same, which are probably because that's going to be the head. Hopefully those two are the right-handed ones. They might be left. I'm going to work it out in a second. But I want to emulate this one. And this one I can see is swirling around that way. So it's, I've got, that's a right-handed one. So it's going to go clockwise. We're going to work clockwise for that one. These two are anti-clockwise. It just gives you the chords angling down like that. I, I just like that effect. Yeah. Right. So this is going to be a right handed. Um, so if we can make sure that everything's seeable. Now, because we've got a loose cord, this one coming out of here, the first tie is usually a little bit dubious. Hopefully we don't pull it right the way through. So we're going to go around to our right hand side over and over and over and over. Then the last one can poke through there like so. Now. What I try and aim for is this nice sort of flower pattern around the core. When you look down the core, the first one doesn't usually come out fantastic because you're, you're sort of taking in account the angles. It's not flat, if you like, if it's going out at an angle. But it's not looking too bad. As I say, be a bit uh, cautious that you don't pull out the single one. There you go. Hopefully you can see this little pattern just here. Let me just carry on. Right hand, right hand. Over. And over. Down through. And tighten. Now if I was leaving these legs just as they are. I'd have done a wall knot as a last knot so that you didn't see these little white cutoffs and melts. So the cords would have come out the bottom. But because I'm going to do um, a Turk's head or an elephant's foot, as I call it, um, on the end of each of them, I've just made life easier for myself and cut them off and just melted. because a walnut, yeah, it's not too bad to tie, but uh, it's just an added thought, you know. I've, I've gained, a, I've grabbed, if you can see in there, I've actually grabbed an extra cord there. I'd have liked to have actually just ended up with the two between the legs, but I've ended up with a bit, but no one's going to ever see that. So I'm not too fussed about that one. Right. I've said before with these crowning you can just keep going and going and going until something says, oh that'll be okay. So there's another one. Over. 
over and over. Now I don't know exactly the length that I need to go. I can count the stitches coming up one of the other legs and well I know that there's eight stitches actually it comes up each leg. Come on Michael concentrate You're pulling it all to bits. Um, but it comes out to about two inches. So what I'm going to do now is carry on making that leg to a point where I'm happy with it and we'll cut the ends off together and see what we got. Okay, back to you shortly. Well, with that, there you go. Um, I've come up two inches. It's just under two inches, but they're all just under two inches. Uh, you can see that you only have a little bit of cord left. Yeah. Reflection on the uh, glass. I can't see if you're on screen, but uh, yeah. So what we're going to do now is just trim them off. So we'll pull that one through, cut it off with about an eighth of an inch still showing, heat that and the one there will pull tight heat that one And then the nearly got too close to that one. Then um, we grab a set of pliers because that core has got wire in it. And what we're going to do is going to push down on the threads and cut through the wire. Take off that bit. And then I tend to um, push down again and try and get some more wire. I don't know if you can see that in the, but there's a little bit of wire there. You don't want that sticking into anything. So we'll take that off, pull the leg back to shape. And then the little bit of cord that's left, we we'll just heat that up. I like how you can just bend their legs about a bit, you know? So that's starting to look like the body. As I say, I want some feet on this. Um, gonna do some of those in a minute. Let's just pop back to the head. Now your former isn't gonna be exactly the same shape as this. And I don't know if I'm repeating myself. If I am, I'll have to edit this bit out. But, um, I ended up with 12 when it was in my jig like oops when it was in my jig I ended up with 12 turns going around my jig um, and then the next um, over and over was I made sure that I came to how can I how can I say so we've got we've come up the amount the the um 12 there and then i made sure that this is going to be my next side and i've taken the cord over over and over so that i've got these as the jowls this is the orientation that i was trying to talk about and then the last bit where you actually um come in round and through you um that is the last bit of the orientation and then it turns out like so yeah so that's a work in progress is the head uh, i've got ideas for that 
Um, what I haven't got it fixed in my head at the moment is how we're going to have the horn. We might have one large horn or two, but one small horn and one large. Uh, but how to do the horn? There's a couple of ways I'm thinking. Is one is to have a small former and then do some stitching around it so it diminishes to um, a small horn um, with a Turk's head at the base as a skin. Do you know, know what I mean? So that we got a bit of skin around the, the base with the horn coming through it. But uh, instead of just this piece of cord, we'll have a Turk's head, small Turk's head um, out of something. Um, still want to go with the black eyes out of these, if I can. Um, know where I'm going with the ears. Think I know where I'm going with the eyes. Know where I'm going with the nostrils. And we we'll cover those together. Um, it's going to be, if I remember rightly, off of the uh, photograph, it has, um, uh, I think it's a snake knot that comes right the way around. It just sets the chin and everything off. It looks quite good there. Now, let's turn our attention to this armour. Um, I think we will make one of these together now. Um, all you need is a piece of cord let's put this out the way it's a very simple that angel's wing get rid of the uh, debris off of all of this stuff so here we are with this cord it really is nice feeling cord um, we're going to take a meter of that or approximately a meter and turn that and we're going to gut it Yeah, I think that's measuring out with my nose, stretching it all out. I think that's a meter, or good as. So we cut that bit off. Remove the innards. Heat, yeah, we can heat one end up. Melt that over. I'm going to, I like a piece of, um, I like a bit of wire in my angel's wings. So we're going to cut off, that's about three inches, about three inches of wire. Bend the ends over so they don't go anywhere. In fact, we'll just bend the one over. We'll uh, find the end that we haven't melted and just put the bent end down into the cord. They just disappear, melt that over, and then I want to bend about a quarter of an inch down at a right angle like so. And then we're going to do our, so we've got the right angled piece over to your right, I believe. Um, so we're going to loop up, come in front of it like so. Yeah, so we've got a sort of a D. There's the D. Then we're going to go under and up through now with with the cord the gutted cord you have to be very careful you don't get too much twist or else you're it's a right pain in the what's it so you're going to come up over under and over and then you're going to look at the cord and see if it's flat now that's flat there, but it's twisted there. So we're going to bring that round flat. And we want six of these. 
Wait, that's two. One, two, three. Overs and unders. Now this is what I'm trying to point out. Can you see at the top of this one? It doesn't look right. It's not flat. It's doubled over. So we've got to make sure that that has flattened out like so, yeah? Save, saves a whole lot of messing around later. So that's three. Straighten that one out. Part them so that there's a nice gap at the top there so you can work through it. So that's four, one, two, three, four. Going for the fifth now. phone's ringing in the background. <laughs> ah, miss one, miss one, yeah. Through there, back up through there. Again, that's, that's not flat. We're coming up that way and it's bent over. So we need to actually twist that cord around like so. Now I make that five so far. One, two, three, four, five. So we can just take up the last one through there for the six. Over and under, over and under. Right, there we go. So there's six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now what I tend to do is just pull them together, make sure that the edge of the wire is still there, but pull them together, squash them together a bit, bend that back down. Whoops. And that then holds it in position. Now we're going to work on that cord there. Going to bring it out like so. Yeah, starting to neaten up along the bottom there. Right, we've pulled that one along there. Now this one is this one. So we've got to pull it up. So we've got a good start on there. Now this one's going to travel through and it will be that one. So we'll pull that one through. Now tension is key on this. You want it about right. Comes along here, comes back down to that first bite. Then it comes back up the knot this way. I'll give it a good old tug on the, make sure that the wire's in there. And give it a bit of 
bit of a tug. Now we're going to go back across the knot, down the knot. And we are going to get some twists in this in a minute because it's gutted, it twists very easy. I can see a twist in that loop there now. So we've come down the knot, we're gonna go back up the knot now, and it tends to go one space inwards. So I know that this one, the back one, is that one there. Now as it comes up, oh, we're lucky. It's still looking as though uh, it's square. But that one's not, or is it? Yeah, that one's okay. Still nice and strong. I don't know if you can see that, but there is a tw definite twist there, yeah? So we've got to work that twist out. So as we come up like so, I was lucky there, the twist did come out on its own without me ending up with another twist in here. But we'll see. Oh, there's definitely a twist there. So what we'll do is we'll straighten up this loop, like so, and then pull the twist through and leave the straight stuff just here. And I'm probably gonna to have to do that all the way through the knot now. Let's have a look. saw me using some pliers. The reason being is while well, I use I'm doing so much cording, my nails crack. And if that gets a little splinter on it, which this one has, it keeps catching. So I tend to use the pliers a lot more than I normally would. Um, let's get that straight there. Comes through nicely. Now I'm aware, I'm aware that there's a twist in here, so that's what I'm actually doing. As I go to the next pull through, I'm making sure that I've got enough cord there on that loop there, straight. Hold it tight. I'm pulling the twist through now. There's the twist there. Keeping this tight. And I've, well, I didn't win. I was trying too hard, um, but I've managed to get it out now. Coming back over the knot. That looks okay. Got a twist.
go. Make sure it's more or less the right size. I've done this one a little bit tighter than the last one, but we can relax it a little bit. And just about the same size now. Yeah. So that's how we do the armor. Four angels wings. So I've got two more to do. Um, so what am I going to do now? I'm going to go away and do most of my Turks, Turks head for its feet. Think about the Turks head business on the front of the nose, just here. Um, make my other two of these. Might make the ears out of blue as well. I'll, I'll see about that. Um, I am actually making another one of these at the same time, so I'll probably be making many Turks, Turks heads like this. I, I, I don't know whether to do a double Turks head for these or a single. I know on the original I did a single. I think I'll probably do a single on the Rhino and leave the doubles with the with the elephant. Right. So when I come back, I should have lots of little bits and pieces done and I can actually refer that to them to you. OK, speak to you later. Well, welcome back and shock, shock, horror, horror. It's actually completed. But not quite because everything is just pinned together. Now, what I like to do on occasionally on these uh, videos is to work backwards. So if we take off the horn, pretty sure it'll come off. It's got three, three pins holding it all in. We can get them out. We'll show you how to make the horn. It's quite basic really. But um, in doing so, we can actually show you how to make the feet for the animal as well, yeah? So all four of these are just pinned, the armor, all four is just pinned into position. Um, you can see that it's got two little tufty ears. Now that's just two millimeter gray, four cord, it hasn't, it's not been gutted, and that had five um, bites on each. And you can actually, they're just pinned on there at the moment into shape. So oh, they're gonna be glued on there. Yeah, so no problem with those. They're made the same way as these were. Yeah, the angel's wings. So that's two little angel's wings, five bites each. We'll show you how to make the um, nostrils. Cause I've got a cute little way of doing that. Um, the eyes, you can see that I did actually use those little gems. All I did was got a bit of, little bit of blue tack pushed them into position where I wanted them. Cut a little bit of black two millimeter gutted cord and just line the bottom of the eye. Yeah, with that, I think that looks pretty good. I don't want to re really take that all to bits. And then we've got a bit of two millimeter full cord um, over the top, two, two millimeter full cord underneath, yeah. What else have we got here? We've got a tail. That's just a piece of wire inside a piece of blue gutted cord. Um, and then that's threaded through the gray. And then the wire goes into the animal. Yeah. Um, you'll notice that it's got a snake knot all the way around its chin and up around the back there. All I did with that was got a piece of two millimeter gray cord, marked out the length of what I actually wanted to cover in um, snake knot. Then I got about, about, oh, there's what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's about nine feet, let's say 10 feet. So um, yeah, 10 inches. So that's 10 feet. So I've got about 10 feet of um, two millimeter full core corded um, cord. Um, and then just did a snake knot all the way around the core 
and then it's just pinned into position at the moment. So I'm quite pleased with the eyes, I'm quite pleased with the ears. The feet are looking really good. Um, the chin looks good. I'm not going to actually show the um, snake knot all the way around the core there because it's quite a basic knot, the snake knot, and you can always get a, an up-to-date YouTube video on snake knot, but it's basically the length from the back here all the way around to there. Right, so let's have a look how we make this horn. Quite straightforward, really. What we need is um, a Turk's head, but only a single Turk's head, yeah? Um, we will do a Turk's head. I tend to do it round one finger because I know that it needs to come down small, yeah? Most Turk's heads are done on two fingers. My fingers are huge. So I do it on one finger. We go round once and cross at the front. Round the second time and cross at the front again. I've got a fit on this piece of, it's about um, 12 inches long, the cord. Um, no, it's not gutted, it's a whole cord. So we then, let's do that again closer up, make sure you can see. So, over the finger, back over, crossed, like so. Back under the middle of these two, cross it up to there, and then we can start to put that through there. Like so. Get that out of the way for the second. Now we're looking at these two vertical cords. Left hand one has got to go over the right hand. So we bring that around like so. Yeah. So there's an elliptical hole in the middle. So that one, this left hand one went over the top of the right hand one. Now this is going to go up underneath what was the right hand one, but is now the left, and go through like so. Yeah. Now, if we look down right at the base of our, my finger, we can still see two cords. Still see two cords there. I want to go underneath this right hand one with my fid. So we're going underneath that one. Pull that through. Come around to the front again. You can see our cross there. And we're going to go where this one's gone. Just up through there. And there we are. That is our single cord Turk's head. And that is what is on there tightened up. So now we've got to make this to actually be able to put that onto it and tighten it up. That's quite basic as well. Um, what do we, and you can see that this has got a DNA at the top and then it goes into um, a crown. It's got a DNA cord and that is gutted cord. That's all gutted cord, the white. So I've just got a few bits of white here uh, something that I was using on another project so it is joined um, but what we're going to do we're going to use that for actually doing the knotting and we're going to use so what we got is a, about two in, three inches of um, two millimeter and I've got a piece of wire in this gutted piece of cord yeah going to push that down like so heat it up just just a t and it's much longer you can see it's much longer than the wire which is good we're going to double over the core which is gutted cord yeah we're going to hold the loop like so we're going to slip the two millimeter in there like so 
get it just to the right position. Melt that one, stick it onto the um, larger core, like so. Now that is going to be the top. I haven't melted that all that well actually, but we're going to go with it anyway. So that's melted between those two. We're going to do a DNA around, you can still see, yeah, DNA around that. Like so. Have to take your time on this bit. It's not going to look fantastic because I haven't taken my time on melting that neatly between those two or that arched cord. But I don't want it too tight. I want it to be a bit of a pointy, if you see what I mean, on top so that it. Nice and tight though, but just just off the top. I do the second one. As you know, a DNA is a cobra, but all one-handed. So we go around this one. Let's hope we don't lose it. Uh, yeah. I think that's uh, starting to try to come off of there. But we still might be able to win. Nice and tight, yeah, it's gone back into position now. Another one of those. And you see it starting to twist. Mine's a bit gappy at the top there because uh, I haven't taken my time doing it, but you can see that it's starting to twist around in a DNA or a helix, helix shape. So once we've got it about there, about an inch of uh, helix, we're gonna tie one more, but loosely, like so. We're going to introduce <clears throat> another piece of white cord, gutted. And we're going to go in. We've got that, we've got our um, helix still there, but we're going to go through and above the knot, about halfway, and tighten up once again. So that we've ended up now with four cords, yeah? Nice and tight, oops, not that one. Nice and tight on that one. And then we're gonna do a right-handed crown like so. And I'd probably do about, um, I, pop, I don't know if I've got enough cord here, but I'd probably do about three or four, maybe five. Depends on the look you're looking for, a longer horn or a shorter horn. slipped off the top we're on not tight enough at the top really so yeah I would actually then continue I'll do a couple more just so that you can see the effect this won't be used
there you go so that's a helix into a crown last one I think I've missed one there so I've done it wrong one two three and four Once you've got to this stage and it's nice and tight like so and you can see my one on my animal is probably down to about there but you want the spike of the wire to go into the nose obviously these will be trimmed off but before we trim them off I tend to put the single Turk's head on top and tighten it up tight and you'll end up with that which is spot on here so there's his horn um, that also takes care of his feet because I had four of those I will actually put a touch of super glue on the bottom of them because I was mucking around with it last night and one of these popped off and I didn't like the idea of it popping off. Um, let's look at the nose. Now the nose is really quite straightforward. It's just a piece of grey cord um, tied in a way that you end up with two loops and then it's infilled with a, a bit of black two, mil two millimetre. This is also two millimetre. So let's grab a piece of that, see if I can get this right. So we're going to have a loop, like so, and we're going to pull and then we're going to push a loop from the main bulk of the cord through so, like so, and tighten down. So that is one nostril, yeah. We work, when we're happy with the actual sizing, like so, you know, it could be smaller, or bigger we'll then cut that piece off and the idea is that we then do another one takes a bit of jiggering around jiggery pokery um, let's pull that one like so that one up like so Right, so there's the second one. Obviously the, the um, gap between the two is probably too big. So can you see that there's a, a little distance there, which is going to use it like his top lip. So that one would be there. I'd probably make that a little bit bigger before I did any cutting. That one just slightly bigger. Um, I would reduce that by feeding it through to one of the knots and then goes on there, this being sort of taking up a bit more to about there, yeah? Um, so once we're there, to the right side, I, I won't fiddle about trying to get it, this bit smaller because it'll take me too long, but um, we'd snip that off, snip that off, Heat that one up. Heat that one up. So that would be our nostrils, like so, yeah. And then we'd put a piece of black cord in the in the inside of that. Uh, what else is there to say about this beast? Um, not a lot, really. I'll um, get it all glued up. Um, 
Might even just give it a touch of white on the eye, although the actual gems do shine sort of thing, you know, maybe it doesn't need any white on this one. Um, I personally would have had uh, grey armour, but um, I still do like the blue, but I'd put, my preference would have been the grey grey armour. So let's see what it looks like when I've glued it up, and I'll come back to you. Well, there he is. He looks pretty cute, doesn't he? I did make some grey armour to go round, and I did have a look at it, and I, I, I liked it probably just as much as the blue. Um, these won't be wasted. I've been commissioned to uh, make a, another elephant, so all four of those are going on the elephant, and plus one of these Turk's heads, which I made in the process of making the film, um, that will also go on to the elephant, um, which I'm a good way through. But uh, yeah, this has turned out quite well. I love the way the horn has come out with the crown at the bottom um, and the spa spiraling, um, I've forgotten what it's called now, Sp DNA, spiraling DNA coming out the top there. His tail's come up quite nice. These blue bits don't distract away from it at all. The eyes look great with those beads. I've got some more of those beads, so I'm a bit lucky there. His nose has come out as well as I could have expected, and his feet are lovely. Um, thanks for watching, um, and I'll meet you again on the next creature. Cheers.